All right, we're gonna set up Google Search Console on a new domain together. This is a step-by-step -step guide and I'm gonna try to help you not get stuck. All right, let's go. Welcome to the channel, my name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make better decisions in your daily work using your analytics data. Thanks everyone that has been liking my videos recently and has subscribed to the channel. That really helps me get this video out to as many people as I can. As a a way to say thank you, I have created a cheat sheet with 20 strategies to help you grow your website traffic. These are the things that I would think about if you would ask me, how can I get more traffic to my site? So there's a link in the video description if you wanna grab that. Also, I've put a link in the video description to a playlist full of videos just like this. So if you like this video and wanna watch more, go check out that playlist. All right, we're gonna start by logging into Google Search Console. I never can remember what the link is, so I'm just gonna Google it, Google search console here you go it's a top link I'm gonna say start now and i'm gonna view this form in english so you'll be able to follow along let me log in and i'll be right back all right i've logged into google search console and i already get the option to verify my new domain and i have a decision to make do i want to verify an entire domain so i get all urls across that entire domain including all subdomains but this will require a dns verification or do I just want to verify a URL prefix? Then I get the data from one domain variant, but this verification might be a little bit easier. Let's uh, go over what the differences are. Let's take a look at my own domain name, leonkortweg.com. If I verify this on a domain level, I will get access to all different variants and you will have at least four variants. For instance, your non-secure domain so if you do not get a certificate, you will get a non-secure link. And then you have two variants, one with www and one without. And then you also have the secure way of writing your domain name, HTTPS. That also comes with www, dot or without. So you at least have four different domain variants. And if you have subdomains, you'll have even more. So if you go the URL prefix route, you will only get the pages underneath a single domain. So this is usually okay if you have a single domain and you're just redirecting, for instance, these three to this one. And this is the domain that is used for your entire site and you do not have other subdomains and you're not accidentally using one of the other domain variants. Then URL prefix should be fine. This is also a little bit easier. So let's go via that route for now and then we can go back and check the other one as well. So let's fill out our domain in the URL prefix version and press continue. Now we need to prove to Google Search Console that this is really our domain. And sometimes this goes through immediately. There are two ways that are probably the easiest to get this domain verified. And that is if you already have Google Analytics set up on that site, or you already have Google Tag Manager set up on that site. So those two options right here are probably the easiest way of verifying. And I would just try that before you do something else. So just open up Google Analytics and try to verify it will say it takes a minute. With me, ownership verification failed because I don't have access to that GA4 property yet with this email address, because that's the whole deal. You need to have access with the email address that you're currently logged into right now. So let's try the other one as well. Google Tag Manager, same deal. This is probably one of the easiest way to verify that this is actually your domain, but it will not always work. So let's press verify. And this will also give me uh, the same message ownership verification field. In some cases, even when you have access, it will say the same thing. That's usually the case when the tracking code of either Google Analytics or Google Tag Manager is not exactly in the right position. Then this verification, in my experience, will also fail very often. So if those two things are not an option, you will have two other ways of verifying that this is actually your domain. And the first one is by downloading an HTML file. So I'm gonna download this by pressing this button. This will say download the files. So it should be on my desktop somewhere. Yeah, there you go. So if you want to use this verification method, you need to upload this to your server and then press verify. Let me just show you how this works. So if you wanna use an HTML file to verify that you're the site owner, you need to check if you have access to your server. I just went ahead and it turns out that I don't even have access to my own server because for this particular domain, I'm using a page builder. I didn't make the site myself. But if you would have site access, you would use a so-called FTP program. I have one right here. 
where you can log into your server and then navigate to the root folder of your server and then you can just upload the file right into your server. And if you've done that, you can press verify to verify that you're the owner of the domain. If I'm gonna do this, this will not work because I just uploaded it to the wrong server. But if you've uploaded it to the right server, this is the way you can verify that you're the site owner. So if the last three domain verification methods did not work, there's one left that you can use to verify that you're the domain owner. And that is to verify via the domain name provider. And if you're going for this route, I actually recommend that you go back into this screen and then just verify the entire domain all at once. This way you're going to verify that you're the site owner of every domain variant. So not just one variant like we did in the last three steps, but you'll verify that you're the owner of all domain variants, including all subdomains. So this is really beneficial. It will take a little bit more work and it may be a little technical. Uh, sometimes you can't even do this yourself, so you need to find out who is in charge of that specific domain. So let's go ahead and fill out this domain. So here Google automatically detects that this domain has been set up via Cloudflare. But this is not always the case. So I'm gonna say any DNS provider. So this is the more general way of doing it. But if Google somehow detects a known domain provider, it will help you make domain verification a little bit easier. But I'm gonna show it to you how you can do this using any DNS provider. If I work together with clients, this is the information that I send to my client and I try to find out like who's in charge of administrating this domain, who can I contact with domain changes, and then this is the information that I send to them. I'm gonna show you how you would do this if you're the domain owner. So you could even send this video over to the person responsible to help them make this change. So I went ahead and logged into my web page builder. I went into the screen that lets me make DNS changes. So these are really settings on your domain. Don't go ahead and change a whole bunch of things because this will control the website that your domain points to. This will control the email that your domain points to. So you can really destroy a lot of things, especially in larger organizations. Be really careful. So when in doubt, I really recommend that you also just check with the help desk of your domain provider. They're usually really helpful with making changes yourself. Also the settings screen looks really different from one provider to the other, but I really hope that my example will help you make the changes yourself. All right. So I'm gonna go back into Google Search Console. These are the instructions that I got. It says that I need to add a record with the type text. And here in this screen, I can add a custom record and uh, I can create different types of records and I need to make a text record. So the next step is that I make the DNS configuration for demokortweg.com. So this is really the name and the record is the contents of the, so I copy this part into the field. I'm going to add this and now let me check if this went right. Yeah, so I have new text record with the name leoncortech.com, which is my domain, and then the text record right here. So now I've made the change. Let me just try to verify to see if this works. What you'll find is that sometimes it takes a little bit of time before the verification can come through. DNS records can take up to a day to fully process. But right now it worked immediately. So I have just verified that I'm the owner of the domain. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was clear. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please click like and subscribe to the channel. That really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. All right, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.